Thanks. So uh, I'm Merlin, or Merlin is in Dutch, uh, and I'll be talking about Maimo Lesto or Maimo Lesto, or however you want to pronounce it. It's kind of hard to pronounce. Uh, it's a hobby project I'm doing with a couple of people. Um, during my daytime, I work for the Internet Archive, and I need to be here to <laughs> go to the next slide. Um, so. Uh, what and why is, is MAMO Lesto? I'll, I'll get to that. Um, I'll give you some history of MAMO in general and CSSU. Uh, I'll tell you how we're developing, uh, what the current status is, and what we're, where we're headed. So MAMO Lesto is a mobile OS for phones and tablets, like Android or iOS or uh, UV ports or uh, the Purism guys, what they're making. Um, it's based on Dev1, which is based on Debian, but it's Debian without systemd. Um, and we're currently we're using uh, Debian Stretch or uh, Devonaski, but we might switch to uh, the newer upcoming release soon, which will be uh, Ceres or Buster. Um, we have a strict mainline only policy, so a lot of these devices, old, uh, Android devices, they come with old kernels uh, that are provided by the vendor, but they are never really updated at all. So you're stuck with old security, uh, like with security bugs uh, kernels. So that's really bad, and we just want the latest Linux version, which is called mainline. Uh, it's the entire GNU Linux experience. It's based on Debian, so you have everything that's in the Debian package repository. You can have it on your phone or on your tablet. Uh, so it comes with all that freedom, hackability, and quite some bugs as well, at least right now, because we're still in the uh, pre-alpha stage. Um, I guess I've given you some reasons. Uh, in particular, I've uh, so <laughs> as reason as to why we're actually doing this. Personally, I've used the uh, uh, Nokia 900 phone ever since it was released by Nokia. And I don't really like Android. I have an Android phone, but it doesn't work very well for me. I want a more open phone. The phone just gives me root by default. Um, does not lock down. That doesn't require me to install some app store just to do basic things. Uh, it's a lot of fun just to learn about uh, various components of Linux uh, subsystem and actually like use them. Uh, it's very practical because a lot of system, uh, software already existed for the old Nokia OS. And uh, it's entirely community, community developed, so there's no company backing it at all. So there's no particular direction that the project will be get pulled in because the company wants to do something. Um, so a little bit of history. I already mentioned uh, Nokia and the Nokia 900. It's, uh, I think, the first hacker phone. Uh, Nokia had a uh, series of uh, internet tablets, uh, the N770, N180, N8010, and the N900 was the first one that could actually also make phone calls. Um, uh, it was based on GNU Linux. That was kind of cool. I think that was one of the first uh, like, uh, widely shipped phones that was based on GNU Linux. Maybe also one of the last. Uh, it used the Debian Package Manager. That's very nice. Um, it mostly used GTK and Qt. Uh, and a lot of the applications were based on that. Most of them were open source. Um, it's still maintained by the community. Uh, the, at least the parts that were open source have been maintained. There's still like security fixes like 10 years in. So that's pretty cool. Um, and there's some parts that are unfortunately not open source, which is what we're trying to fix, and uh, you can find them there. So we're still in the pre-alpha stage, but for several devices, the following already just works. Um, if this device supports host mode, you can do USB uh, host mode. Uh, on the go, it also works. Otherwise, it's mostly just peripheral. We have a virtual keyboard and software that works. Uh, so if the, key uh, if the device doesn't have a a physical, physical keyboard, which the ones that we actually use most of the time have, but if it doesn't, there's a virtual keyboard that you can use. Uh, there's a UI for wireless that just works. Audio works most of the time and charging also. Uh, average battery life on the N900 is like 17 hours, which is not very good, but there's a lot that we can improve there. Uh, for more software status, you can see this wiki page. Uh, there's a couple of things that we are working on really hard to, to get uh, uh, done, so actually it becomes a useful phone. One of the main things is to get uh, data from the modem working, so you can actually use internet while you're not on Wi-Fi, to actually make uh, text and phone calls work. Most of these things, at least on the device that we're currently working on, uh, already works, but there's no UI for it. So you can start a phone call, you won't actually hear anything. Uh, you can send text, it actually just works on the, on the Nokia. And data works, you just need to use the command line tool and set up a lot of things before you can actually use it, so it's not particularly useful as a phone, uh, of, or on the phone right now. Um, 3D acceleration kind of works. So the UI that we're using was made by uh, Nokia, and it uses OpenGL OES. So if you don't have any acceleration, it's a pretty bad experience. Um, accelerometer, ambient light sensor, and radio are 
uh, already working on most of the devices, and Nokia actually had a software that will detect if the mode changes by, you know, like if you, if you flip the foam, it will uh, rotate the screen, stuff like that. That's uh, still work in progress. And there's no browser yet, so there's a lot of browsers out there that kind of work, but not all of them are finger friendly or mobile friendly, and uh, that, that will still be, like prove to be a challenge. Um, as far as infrastructure and CI goes, so basically how do we work? We have uh, a, a GitHub account. We're not on GitLab yet. We might migrate at some point. And we uh, run Jenkins that builds all of our packages. So if we want to make a new release, we just tag a new uh, commit in Git and issue a build in Jenkins. It will build it for all the architectures we currently support, which is uh, x86, ARM, and uh, ARM64. And our build slaves are cheap all owner devices and one of the more powerful 64-bit ARM uh, devices. Uh, probably the only ARM CPU that AMD ever made. Um, and we've had to do a lot of porting because the OS that Nokia made was really old. Or right now it's really old. It was pretty pretty good back then. And uh, it used HAL. I'm not sure if anyone still remembers what HAL was. I see one or two hands. So it stands for hardware abstraction layer, and it's basically, uh, it did a lot of the hardware abstraction, and that's now handled by completely separate components in Linux. So we now have UDEF, uh, UPower, UDISCs, uh, the input layer in Linux, and GadgetFS for managing USB gadgets. So how did all these things, it provided a library around managing your device. It's gone, uh, buried, so we had to port a lot of code to these new APIs. Uh, we've done most of that, so that all kind of works. Um, various memo widgets relied on GTK2 or QD4 with various patches, and we've basically taken those patches, applied them to the new GTK and new uh, QD versions, so you can actually use the more modern libraries. A lot of the porting and version engineering, uh, version engineering was done by the community before I even thought about this project, and I was not even part of the community back then. So a lot of the code that was actually closed sourced by Nokia, they've just taken it and uh, did a, like a reverse engineering of the entire uh, project. And <laughs> now there's a lot of open versions of the same thing running on the device. So slowly they've replaced all the closed parts by open parts. And uh, we're just keeping on doing that. Um, this is the N900. I'm not sure if you've seen it before. I hope some of you have because it was a really cool device at least 10 years ago. It has like 250 megs of RAM. 600 megahertz CPU, and it's still quite usable as a phone today. Uh, on name it uses like 80 megs of RAM when it's in active use, and when you start a browser, it probably go up like way more. Uh, so we're also aiming for better devices, but in general, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, as I said, it needs some power management work, but so you can get like 20 hours of uh, battery life. Currently, it's running Linux 4.15 with a couple of patches on top of it because the GPU in there is a PowerVR one, which is probably the worst supported GPU ever on Linux. Uh, so we need to rebase our patches on the newest Linux, and, and then it will work on 5.0, 5.0. Wireless works. The battery charging works quite well. The touchscreen is good. Keyboard, USB works. Audio uh, kind of works. There's some routing work to be done for the phone call. So you can actually make a phone call, and the call will go through. And the other side can pick up, but you won't hear anything because there's some <laughs> routing that still needs to be done. But you can play music with it. That works. Um, 3G, 3G data works, as I said, without UI. And... Uh, as of last month, we, we've been able to send some text messages with a, a test UI that somebody made. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other uh, device that's actually very promising, at least if you ask me, is the Motorola Droid 4. There was a talk about this device last year uh, by Sebastian. And it was basically about the work he did with some other people to make it work really well on mainline Linux. And pretty much everything works right now except for uh, 3D acceleration, because unfortunately, this is also a PowerVR device. Um, however, it seems that at least on uh, power management-wise, it's pretty good. So they, I think they got it running for like five days or something now, if it's not being act uh, used super actively. So that's really cool. And it has a lot more RAM, um, like I think one gigabyte. There's a dual core in there, so it's actually uh, more usable than the 100 and the 100 at this point. Um, and yeah, again, uh, most of the, use the things that you expect to work, like wireless, battery, keyboard, USB, all that, all that stuff just works. Uh, including audio since a couple of months. Then there's uh, an entire set of devices that are kind of supported, but you might need to do some work depending on the device that you have, which are the Allwinner devices. So Allwinner is uh, a, comp a Chinese company that makes cheap ARM chips, and they've been doing that for quite some years. They were never particularly good at supporting mainline Linux, but uh, there's a huge community around them now. 
uh, without Owen and themselves actually participating, that made sure that uh, mainline devices, or mainline actually works really well on these devices. So there's the Olimax, Olimax, Inolim, it's, it's like form factor of a Raspberry Pi. It's similar to the Pine64 devices. There's actually some cheap tablets. This one pictured here is, I think, 50 euros, and there's now actually an open source 3D driver for it. And not just an open source 3D driver, there's also open source hardware decoding that works. And this is just so much work that people have been doing over the years to get us to work. So it's a, it's a very promising device. Um, and I think, right, that's what I can't read from here. <laughs> so uh, another thing that I should mention is there's uh, the Pine64 guys, they're in the AW building, uh, the hardware building basically, and they're showing off their Pine tab and Pine phone devices, or at least their dev kits. So they're making an actual uh, an open source hardware phone that they uh, will probably release in, I think, a year from now or something. Uh, you should really check it out. It's very cool. Uh, it's also based on owner devices, so it'll get really good mainline support. And they've sent us some dev kits already. And I think one of our dev kits is actually there on their desk running Memo Lester. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 2 and 3, they work. There's 3D, 3D acceleration Wi Fi and 64 uh, bit and 32 bit ARM packages. And uh, virtual machine images also work. So if you use QMU or VirtualBox or VMware, you can just take that and develop on it. There's various milestones we still have to reach. I said we're in pre-alpha stage. Uh, we're hoping to hit the alpha soon. We just need to fix a couple of bugs. Uh, you can't actually power off the N100 right now. Right now, it will just reboot. That's kind of shitty. Um, so once that works, we'll probably release an alpha uh, version. The better release will probably come when we have more packages, uh, a functional package manager, which is based on TPKG and the uh, phone calls, and from there we'll figure out what the next targets are, are going to be. One of the main things we hope to accomplish soon as well is uh, Tor integration and WireGuard integration. So uh, if we're going to label it as a, like a hacker phone, it should probably also have Tor and WireGuard, right? Uh, and generally we hope to find a lot more people, like the people in this room, to help out with the project, get excited, and, and we need a lot more people to just code, write documentation, support more devices. Uh, yeah. Another uh, worthy mention is that the Nakuno people are also uh, trying to create, to create an open source hardware device uh, with proper driver support. And I think that it's on sale right now. Um, it doesn't actually come with a modem because they couldn't figure out a way to, well, the modems are insecure by default. So if you don't want to be tracked, you don't really need a modem or you don't want a modem. So you can buy it without a modem and they are giving you the option to actually have Memo to pre-installed. Uh, at least if we get an image out on time. Um, yeah, so summary, uh, we're still in pre-alpha stage, but we need your help, and we're going for an alpha soon. It's already usable on several devices. There's no phone calls yet. You can ring someone, but you don't hear anything, which can be useful if you just want to let someone know that you're thinking about them or something, but otherwise it doesn't really work. Um, we have a wiki, but it needs a lot more love as well. I want to mention the similar efforts. So there's uh, Nemo Mobile, which has been around for a long time. Um, it uses the same base as the Yola OS does, which is the Mare project, but they are actually also using parts of Android like LibHybris, and we're just using plain GNU Linux, so that's a, a difference there. Postmarket OS is kind of cool. They're supporting a lot of different devices, I think like 150, but they mostly use vendor kernels, at least they just try to support it in any way they can, um, which doesn't quite align with our mainline only goals. And they have various UIs packaged, including our UI. There's UB ports, which is basically the Ubuntu phone, but uh, community developed, maintained. There's KDE Plasma, which I know exists, but I can't tell you much about it, but just check it out anyway. And there's PureOS, which is now being developed by the Purism guys with their Libra M5 phone. It's also quite interesting. I'm uh, curious what they will come up with. And I have like a minute and a half left, so I'll show you a couple of screenshots of the UI. Uh, this is uh, the phone the, the connected to EAP, uh, WPA2 uh, network like SpaceNet. It's like Agirome. Uh, the internet, connect internet connection settings, uh, X-Terminal, uh, showing the current Linux version and the RAM in use. Uh, IRC, of course. Uh, the settings for the terminal, virtual keyboard and various layouts. It actually supports all different kinds of languages. I just set it to English. Uh, finally, the system menu. And that's it. So there's a lot of resources here. and I'll take a minute for questions. <laughs> Thanks. Oh sure, we can we can just go outside. I have a couple of devices I can show you, and you can just ask the questions outside. That's fine. But two, one single important question. Thanks. Sorry.
Merci.